patient safety and quality. That is first and foremost in no matter what we do. And when you think about patient flow, and then you know even winding it down into and narrowing it down, I guess, into the perioperative area, you really want to keep those utmost and foremost in mind. Patient safety and quality is is uh, of primary importance. By um, controlling the opportunity to improve perioperative flow, you're going to directly impact patient safety and quality. And I think sometimes people don't really see that direct connection. A great way to think about this is through the work of Dr. Eugene Litvak. The work that he's done just resonates extremely well with my passion for patient safety. There are so many efforts, diligent efforts, to improve patient safety and quality and we're making inroads certainly by reducing mortality. We're trying to eliminate hospital acquired infections. We're trying to uh, reduce borders in the emergency department. We are trying to make sure that we do timely op oper uh, operations for those that are emergent and in need by being able to mitigate those streams, those competing streams in the perioperative area or those patients that are entering into the emergency room we're able then to safely streamline them into the right areas of care, if you will, getting the right patient into the right place at the right time for the right care. And by doing that and applying the science of operations management, reducing that variability that causes those peaks and valleys in patient census and how we care for patients. We can't really control what happens randomly when it comes to patient flow. The patients that come into the emergency room are those that are obviously in emergent need. Those that are coming into the operating room may be of an elective need as well as an emergent need. And if we're having those competing streams inside of our OR and then certainly into the uh, patient care areas, intensive care, the medical surgical units, the inter intensive care for surgery, surgical patients, when you have those competing streams, we're not able to then um, give them the optimal care because of the, the elective cases usurping, if you will, the opportunity to best care for the emergent demand. So it's extremely important to recognize the opportunity to reduce that variability, apply the science of operations management, and then certainly impact safety and quality uh, for the, uh, the care of the patients. I am a firm, absolutely firm believer in process improvement. That's my background. That's what I've done for many, many years. And I absolutely say that that work needs to continue and there's certainly a place for that. But until we really understand the science of operations management and we work to optimize the um, patient flow, reducing that variability to as absolute best that we can. Actually, if we can, we can eliminate artificial variability, control or, or, or better manage how we care for the random demand. When those two come together and we've mitigated those competing forces, I think then we can really truly then work to optimize our um, healthcare environment. Until then, we're always going to have patient errors. We're always going to have um, uh, somewhat unsafe environments, and I believe that we're also going to not be able to control costs by uh, have appropriate, having appropriate resources in the right place at the right time, giving the right care, is a way to, again, control cost, quality, and patient safety. So I think it's really important that people try to escalate their understanding of applying that science, and it, and it truly is a science of operations management.